our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is The Ramble, and I am Alex. See what it says there? Alex, The Ramble. It goes till midnight tonight on the East Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett is with us once again from Lake Oswego in Oregon. And uh, today we had a little bit of problem getting her on because, well, it's Windows versus Mac. And I use a Mac, and she uses Windows. And I wasn't thinking of what could possibly be wrong with her picture not being... Well, I figured it out because I also have windows over here, and it's <laughs> always a problem. But it's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, you know, all for all we've done... You used to plug the phone into the wall, and you talked when it rang. Yeah, That's all. Uh, and, and if it wasn't working, you looked to see if it was plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> One thing I liked about the old phones, you know what the advantage was to the old phones? Let's say you got into a fight with your wife and you wanted to throw something. <laughs> what, what was it you threw? You yanked the phone out of the wall and threw it across the room. Now, then, you just picked it up because it was Did you of- ever really do that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got, I've gotten mad, not necessarily at a wife, but, you know, one thing or another, and just yanked the phone out of the wall and threw it against a, uh, threw it against a wall, and it didn't break. It was made out of Bakelite, that stuff. You remember those old phones? They didn't break. You know why they didn't break? Because they were owned yeah, by the... Yeah, but it made a dent in the wall. I know, but the reason they didn't break is because they were owned by the phone company, and they didn't want those phones breaking. And you pulled it out of the wall, and you always knew how to screw those two wires back into the socket, you know? Uh, are we talking about the old I days? I saw a commercial somewhere. I saw a commercial somewhere the other day for getting replacement parts for your smartphone, one of the big deals of which was a cracked glass. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to live with a cracked glass. It would drive my eyes nuts. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess I do. Yeah, well, uh, 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 people crack uh, the glass is pretty hard to break. It's called Gorilla Glass, but it does break. And then you just they go to these places. I thought that, that was glue, uh, Gorilla Glue. No, the, the grill, <laughs> there's also Gorilla Glass. Do not mix it up with the Gorilla Glue, okay? And, I see. <laughs> and 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 uh, the, 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 you know, it's pretty hard. It's kind of hard to break a phone. I was out. I was voting the other day. And I dropped my phone, okay, uh, from about uh, neck level. And uh, I picked it up, nothing. It's fine, you know. I mean, they, they're they making those things as strong as AT&T used to make those phones they gave to you, and you had to give them back when you no longer needed them, right? But, uh, and then all, I don't of, remember that. all of a sudden me. there was a lot of deregulation of AT&T and so on. And one of the things that happened when they deregulated uh, AT&T was they no longer made the phones. So now you had everybody else making the phones, but they were cheap-ass phones. I mean, these little phones we buy now, even the the most expensive ones, are just, they're nothing. They're like, you know, they're like piffle. I mean, am am I yearning for the old days? Is that what I'm doing here, you know? (laughs) Yes, <laughs> you are again. <laughs> By the way, have you? It's okay. You're allowed. In, you're... In, in your in all your adventures with health, okay, have you ever run up against something with that with what with against, health with health that with, did, did you say you, with health? Yeah, yeah. Did you ever run okay. up against what I had to do yesterday? I had to go to a balance clinic. I don't know what you did yesterday. I had to go to a balance clinic. A what? Balance clinic. For balancing, testing your balance. I think so a while back, yeah. yeah. And they blow hot and cold air in your ear. Oh, I didn't know. I've never been through that. That's new. I mean, <laughs> you know, what I said is the last time. And so how do you balance? Yeah, the last time somebody ever blew in my ear, it was under different circumstances, you know. Um, 
And then they do other things, and you walk out of there. You're dizzy. You're just reeling, you know. But I don't. I don't see. Have- I don't have much balance at all to begin with, and so I learned, you know, long before I had such problems and got this old. Yeah. I had read a really excellent book on aging, that if you watch old people walking along, particularly in New York when the buildings come right down to the sidewalk. Yeah. You'll see old ladies and old men walking along next to that wall, the building wall, Mm -hmm. and they'll touch just a little bit touch the wall all the time Mm -hmm. to check their balance. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really smart. And the doctor who wrote the book thought that was really smart. And so I kept that in mind. And now that I'm even in the house, a little shaky on my feet sometimes, I touch the wall everywhere Mm -hmm. I go. Mm -hmm. And I wash the floor. You know, I have this oxygen concentrator with a big long cable and you can't entirely keep it from being in front of you when you're walking down a hall or something so i'm extremely careful watching where that is because i love my house is carpeted well old bones can break so i'm very very careful that but i always touch the wall as i walk along and more and more i need it it's it's not like i'm really going to quite fall over but I feel shaky, when so I, when I use it all the time. When I get up in the morning, I get out of bed, and then the next thing I do is I stand up. My, this doctor told me yesterday, wait about a minute. That's a chore, time. isn't it? <laughs> well, well, once you get up, you know you're still here for another day. Uh, but then I stand up. Or at least part of it. Then I stand up, and the first thing I do is I reach for the handle on the door to steady me. That's, mm-hmm. you know... And then I'm fine, but I, I you know, I, I'm not, go- I, I keep close to a wall, but I don't touch the wall yet. Well, you should, if you all go along and just kind of, you know, touch it like this. Where's my hand? Here we go. Yeah. You know, as you walk along, just tap the wall. It helps keep you upright. Well, here's the other thing. The reason I thought it was my ears, okay, was if I stood up, <coughs> I was a little lightheaded and so on. But then it started to go away. Now, if I then close my eyes and just stand there, I start swaying. I, I, I'm kind of, I have, so my eyes are really my sense of balance, not my ears. And um, Absolutely they are. Yeah, well, at this point, I mean, your ears, when, you're, when it's dark, your ears are, are giving you the balance. <coughs> I was not getting that balance. He said, but he did all the tests. He said, I can't find anything wrong. So, I don't One know. of the things I do that relates to what you're saying is you're right about eyes when they're closed. And when I get out of the shower and I'm drying my hair, mm-hmm. um, I, the towel comes like maybe only this far mm-hmm. and my eyes are open. Because if I, if I cover my eyes so that I can't see, mm-hmm. then I get off balance. As long as... I can see light. I can. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. So, and also, in the shower. I always have an arm or an elbow next on the wall to keep me from teetering one side or the other. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I just, I'll tell you what bothers me. They don't tell you these things when you're young that well, you need to know when you're old. The, you know, somebody. Well, if you didn't have other things that were happening to you, perhaps the thing you should do now, because of your experience in it, is write a book about. The, oh, please. The owner, everybody the owner, write a book. Uh, no, owner, come on. No, the owners. Nobody, guide. everybody right. who says that has never written a book. Yeah, but the owner's guide to getting old, you know. To the yeah, old body. Yeah, it, like, it just, <laughs> just, it, you know, it's not a, it's not a how-to book or anything. It's a manual, you know. Now, if you, yes. if you need to walk, you hold on to the side of the building and blah, 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 you know. Because the thing I'm finding, <clears> you know what's bothering me? And I hate to talk to you. If people have listened to us before, you know that Ronnie uh, has uh, uh, not that long to go, okay? Uh, she has cancer. And um, uh, but I, the, so I, I feel bad when I even, even, even mention these things. But I just find that what's bothering me as I'm getting older now is I'm beginning to find, like, yeah, I got the neuropathy in the feet, and I got the balance problem, and I got the this, and I got the that. And I don't know if I'm capable of doing the things I once did. Ten years ago, I walked up uh, about 2,000 steps in China to get to the top of a, of a rice field, okay? 
I don't know if I could do that today. You know, and it's not that you don't know; it is that you cannot. Well, I don't know. I might be able to. You know, I mean, I just don't know. I would bet not. I would bet big time money you can't. But the best part about <laughs> it is with these steps going up to the top of the rice field, uh, they actually had guys you could hire for for uh, twenty bucks who would take you up in a carriage. They would carry, to carry you. They would carry you up in this little contraption. Yeah, yeah. Think of how strong they have to be. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I couldn't do ever. <laughs> okay, that job. But uh, and I don't know yeah. if I can drive anymore. I haven't driven a car in maybe four years, and I'm I, I worry that I just don't know how to drive anymore. Do you want to hear a funny little joke, a little tiny joke about yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. I still have my car, and it's parked. If you walk from my apartment, you walk straight out, and the car is parked in the parking lot there, mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> Not extremely hard for me to walk because of the COPD that I can't yeah. I have to go so slowly and it takes so long. Yeah. And I was taking, and I also can't carry anything very heavy without losing my breath. So I take the garbage out when it's only half full. Mm -hmm. But then it was still a walk and it was, so then I realized since I park right across from my little walkway, mm -hmm. I could take the garbage, put it in the car get in the car, drive the 500 feet to the recycling and trash can. <laughs> okay. All right. And well, empty that out. Yeah. And then what I would do is because it's a circular driveway all around the complex where I live, I would just keep going straight and go all the way around. And, you know, when I was driving, a couple of times I went off to a nearby shop for a few minutes. Um that once I was in the car and driving, I felt I felt completely comfortable driving and in control, and I wasn't worried, except I wouldn't go on a highway. And then I would come back and go to my old parking place. But I'm pretty much sure I'm done with that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I just, you know. I think that's yeah. and, and by the way, I've got to say, my neighbors are wonderful. They bring me cooked food. They bring me my mail. They they take out my trash. They um, they cook. Did I say they cook yeah. food for me? Um, and uh, and shop for me. And I have a shopping service every other week now, and and a cleaning service. And it just it makes all the difference when you can't do very much for yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. To look around the house. They were here, the two women were here yesterday to clean yeah. on Tuesday. And they were here to clean. And, you know, you can see where the vacuum cleaner marks are, where they vacuumed the rug. Yeah. And I saw them. They were dusting the window sills under all the windows. And I couldn't get to all those things before I hired them. And it makes all the difference it just to know that your house is clean and, and your bed is changed and... You know, and I can still do the laundry. It's no big deal to put that in and fold it up afterwards. But it it just, God, it just makes, it, if people can't have that, it, it's so, you feel so grubby when you're already feeling grubby and old, you know? <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, the thing is that uh, here we're, we're talking about, you know, griping about what it's like when you get older, which is what your time goes by uh, dot net uh, uh, blog is about. Uh, but and there are probably some people not listening now because they tuned it in and went, "What am I listening to this for?" And all I'm saying is, and that's okay at their age. That's okay at their age, Alex. Yeah, well, it's just you know you should listen because you're going to need this information later because you're going to come to uh, yeah, like but I you did. know you and I didn't have it and we're getting by. We're figuring it well, out. No, but at age eighty, I suddenly realize I am starting to diminish. I, you know, I went a long time without feeling I was diminishing. Huh? Starting? Starting? Well, wait a minute. At 80? At 80, yeah. I think that prior to this, I really, I would say maybe the last five years I've had a few issues. But now I've got enough issues that it impacts my mobility, my, uh, uh, my going out. You know, I don't. 
I, and on top of that, on top of that, let's talk about this, okay? You probably don't know about it because you've had, um, uh, because of, of what's going on in your life, you're spending a lot of time indoors because it, it's not as easy for you to just go out now, okay? But for the rest of us, we didn't have that until now. And mm -hmm. there is a thing, and I talked to my two doctors about it, the one I went to yesterday and my GP. I said, I think I have COVID fatigue. Uh, and it is, I, I'm tired all the time. You know, I, um, uh, all these things. And the doctor yesterday, the balance doctor said, oh, I've got it too. He said, everybody's getting it. It's kind of a COVID fatigue. It's, you're tired of not being able to really spread your wings and go out. You know, you, yeah, you can go out to the front of your apartment house, walk the neighborhood a little bit but i can't go all the way downtown to buy ravioli i can't go down to washington square park to sit there and watch the chess players you know i'm stuck here i'm not going on that damn subway well you know i th i think i think a bit too much is being made of it without dismissing it um because it is it is it is how we live and if you don't live that way you and you will die and so will other you will cause other people to die it will be your fault what and you, you can't do that what do you mean being stuck and you in have it? to yeah and you can complain i don't care if anybody wants to complain about it go right ahead but you know that gets kind of boring after a while and there have been other times in your life when you've been bored to death too um and a different different Eras in our life bring different difficulties to deal with. Yeah. I mean, you and I have not raised children. I'm here to tell you that you would barely have made it through fatherhood. I know you too well. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not so sure that. about me and motherhood either. I, I, I don't know about that. I, I think you're wrong. I think yeah, I, don't you remember what we used to joke? We used to joke that we couldn't have children because our only experience was put the food and the water down on the floor and let the cats to do what they do. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to, you don't have to give a kid a bath. He'll clean himself with his tongue. You know, I mean, right, exactly. you know. <laughs> no, I think I would have made a fine, I would have made a good father. I, I think I would be attentive and I would be doting and all of those things. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I could until have done, the next I, record I, album showed up at the door. I don't think I could have done that and had a career at the same time. You know, I, I think that what I do is so much egotistical that I need to have, if I had needed to have all the focus on me in order to accomplish what I accomplished in life. Does that make sense? Well, you know me. You know it's true. You know. No. Yeah, no. so, you know, you'd be saying something to me, and you go, "Alex, are you listening?" I would go, "No, I'm just thinking about myself." <laughs> <laughs> and here we are at the end of our lives. Well, you yes, know. yes, one way or the other, you know. Uh, but I mean, I—it's just I, I this diminishing of my abilities physically. Uh, bothers me, you know. It, 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 I'm going. Is this the kind of fun I was supposed to have in my? Is this the golden years? What's gold about? Well, you know, there's an awful lot of things that are good that you didn't have time for, or the uh, or didn't make time for when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Like hanging um, out with the grandchildren. <laughs> well, <I'm, laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, grandchildren are particularly dangerous at this point um, because they don't know when they're sick and they can give it to their grandparents. Yeah, yeah. and grandparents die. So uh, that that's really a fraught relationship right now. Yep. Um, but um, but they're different. Play what they don't teach us throughout life, and it doesn't have to be banging on your head lessons. Um, but just to come up now and again, mm -hmm. is that what's what's the song? Is it Ecclesiastes, the the Bible verse or something about for everything yeah, there's, there's season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean that stood the test of long, 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 long time, you know. Yeah, yeah. and it's real. 
and we should bring it up more often. And maybe that's, you know, I've never been a religious person. I'm still not. But maybe that's a reason to pay a little bit of attention to those things in yeah. the Bible. Yep. Is that when we're very young, you know, we're running around and learning and there's all this stuff we've never seen before and it's all exciting. And we get to midlife and then that's our serious time and raising children and planning for the future. And what they leave out mostly mm-hmm. is the old. And what are the virtues of that? Yeah. And there are of virtues to it, you know? Yeah. I mean, the only because my biggest problem now in terms of what I want to do and can't is that there's something about my diseases accelerating now, getting worse, mm-hmm. is that my brain isn't working so well and it won't pay attention. So it's very difficult to read. I can't sustain reading. So I pick up a book, and I really want to read whatever's in that book. But my head just, I I know each word. I know what the whole sentence is. But then I have to work real hard at its actual meaning. And that takes so long, I forgot where I started. (laughs) Ah, boy. You know, Uh, let me me ask you a question here, uh, since it's, you know, we're, we're... a little less than a week away from uh, the election day. Uh, did you vote yet? Of course. Okay. I, but we've, we went out and we, uh, vote. we vote. By, we uh, vote by mail for the last 20 years in Oregon, but my neighbor took mine with hers to put it at the drop-off box because we don't trust that guy that runs the post office to get joy. things anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know, we decided uh, Marjorie wanted to go vote and we had we could just walk down the street and, get it. and we had to wait in line for an hour and while we were there uh, the polling place was passing out water to people who needed it and uh, uh, nice. uh, and nice. uh, uh, some local business came by and gave out free sandwiches to anybody who wanted one and it was just uh-huh. it was a, it took an hour but it was a wonderful experience and everybody was talking to each other in line and you know, and then we got there and we did our little voting, which was pretty fast to do. Um, and when we left, Marjorie said, I feel so good about that. She said, I haven't felt so good about anything in years. That. Huh? People have been saying that all over television. And I think all the ads, starting with the Lincoln Project, but there are tons of other organizations doing them too, saying, plan your vote, plan your vote, plan your vote. And I think it's really working. Yeah. And the numbers are showing it. More people vote than voted, I don't know if the whole election, but half the election last time. Yeah. Um, and I th- I think that people understand that this is, in our lifetime, and we're talking 80 years, you and me, mm-hmm. in our lifetime, this is the most important election there has oh, ever I, been. I, I would agree with you. The face of the yeah, yeah. I would absolutely agree with you. No question about it. Uh, but uh, so, um, you know, encourage everybody. Go, 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 vote. Well, you said to me a while back, I think it was that you wish the only wish you have is that you'll live long enough to see Trump kicked out of office. And I yeah, think that's a long I, way I think there's a good chance that's going to happen. You know, I, I <laughs> well, the I, thing is, he doesn't leave until the end. If he's defeated. He doesn't leave until the end of January. Which means he can do a lot of That's damage. Ninety, 90 days. Uh, yeah, he can mm-hmm. do a lot. Of, he can do a lot of damage in that time. <clears throat> yes, and and I don't know that I can last that long. You know. Well, I'm getting really tired. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm hoping that you are around that long. To me, that's it's an important, <coughs> important thing. I won't be able to jump up and down, but I'll raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> You'll blink once if you're happy today. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh boy! Did you read my blog post today? No. Wednesday? No. Oh, you should. It's called "Old Lady Fancy Dance." <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, that I that I gotta read. By the way, everybody, if, if, you, if you haven't looked at her blog, uh, it's it's there. It goes back years on there, uh, and it's 16 called sixteen years. Sixteen years. Time goes by. It's a long dot time. net, and uh, 
It's her ruminations about what it's like to get old, which is kind of what this particular episode of Alex and Ronnie, or Ronnie and Alex, or the two of us, uh, was all about. Hey, listen, kiddo. See, you know, it's considered yeah. a no-no. It's considered a no-no generally in culture, American culture, to talk about old age ailments. And I just say fooey. There's a whole lot of old people, and we need to know what goes on. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you. Good to see you. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello. How are you? This is uh, this is our little program. That was Ronnie, recorded a little bit earlier today, and... Uh, I hope she makes it to the inauguration. I really do. I uh, the, the, This whole process is getting a little difficult on me because it's difficult on her. But she muddles through, you know, and she fought, she soldiers through. And she, she really, it's funny, when I first start talking to her on those interviews, she's a little down and, oh, I, you know, I couldn't sleep last night or I'm, I can barely get up out of the couch today to come to the chair and blah, blah, blah. And then the minute we go on, she goes into, like, you know, showbiz gear, you know. Uh, what a trooper. What a trooper. I, and I love her dearly. And uh, I don't want to think about the inevitable. Anyway, we've got a, uh, um, a uh, uh, panel here that's getting to form, uh, much like crust on bread, much like, <laughs> yeah, Anyway, it's uh, it's uh, forming, and uh, it's uh, how you do it is if you want to really just all you got to do is click on a link that we have on at gabnet.net over the right hand side of the page in the middle of the page it says click here to join our Zoom panel and you just click on that and it automatically takes you there. It should be that simple for you, so please do it. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to um, say admit all. I don't know. There's one person who has himself listed here because you can put whatever name you want on here. Oh, I, I had a feeling it was going to be you, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, I, I had just that feeling when I saw Anonymous because Anonymous was in the news today. Uh, it seems yeah. we found out who, who Anonymous is. And Trump doesn't know him. <laughs> and Trump doesn't know him. Even though there's pictures with him and Trump. <laughs> oh, oh, there are pictures of him with Trump? Isn't that, yeah, isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah, uh, another night with Ronnie. You know, man, yeah. Yeah. I sit here on my computer mm -hmm. a little bit early tonight and, and just sit here and listen to every single word, you know, coming out of our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Oh, there we go. Adrian, okay. Adrian yeah. came up. Adrian came up to me. So I started uh, talking to her a little bit about... Uh, Ronnie and trying to make her understand a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, there's something inside of her that's killing her. And uh, she started laughing, you know, uh, Ronnie started laughing. <clears throat> and she goes, well, if she's dying, why is she laughing? Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and I said, well, she understands what she has and she's still trying to enjoy her life. You know, so. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. <sighs> it's great being daddy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? The nice job, can, man. The thing you can teach your kids, and and you don't shelter them. You don't seem doesn't seem like you shelter them from life, you know. No, she's early enough. I try to you know explain everything to her, so yeah, at least basic stuff. So yeah, but yeah, so yeah. It's nice. gonna yeah. Ron, listen to Ronnie every week's really nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, by the way, everybody, you can call. You're welcome to do so uh, at any point here. And as soon as people, more people join us, we'll, you'll see them pop up on the screen. Um, yeah, the whole thing with Anonymous today. He, does, he, he said he doesn't know who Anonymous is, and then there's a picture of him <laughs> with Anonymous. Yeah. Well, and then he was saying he was a low, you know, you know he's going to start with the whole, you know, disgruntled employee. He was a low-level employee and all this stuff, and... Well, it doesn't seem like he was a major player. No, you know. but he, he knew his stuff, and, and he's really he's really urging, and he congratulated the, the other younger staff, you know, that were friends with him that spoke up early, and he's hoping for more. But yeah. so it's pretty interesting. 
Well, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know that I could, well, I couldn't work for him to begin with. I couldn't have worked for him when he wasn't president. Right. Nope. You know, uh, that would have been a terrible person to work for, you know. See, you guys, you guys like knew more of him. I think like over here, you know, like on the West Coast, I mean, definitely you guys saw him all the time and really saw what kind of person and and exquisite businessman he was. <laughs> well, I to quite be quite frank with you, about the only time I ever came into contact with anything about Donald Trump was when he got wound up in the newspaper. Otherwise, I didn't give a crap about him. I mean, there was this big ugly building with his name on the front, of it, you know. Uh, with a preoccupation towards gold, you know. But outside of that, I, you know. Now, uh, uh, Jeff, of course, has lived in the area a lot longer than I have. Uh, yeah. So, uh, 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 Jeff, uh, what did you? What was your impression of Trump when he was living here? Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I met up with I, I basically came with in brief contact with Donald Trump once. I was really? doing my radio show in uh, a, a, out of San Francisco, but I was doing it from Las Vegas and from that big tower. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is now. Uh, and they were, they just opened it up and and so the owner was taking Trump for a walk around the building and he walked right by where we were broadcasting. And I was about to say to my uh, producer at the time, go grab him, see if we can get him in here. But we decided not to. We decided he wasn't that important to people in San Francisco. You know? Yeah, he had a big dick length contest with uh, Wynn. You know the Wynn Hotels? Yeah. So Wynn, Wynn had just finished putting his up in Vegas. Yeah. And Trump's is right across the street or right down the street. And so Trump went like, it's like 10 feet taller than wins. Does, wait a minute, does Trump actually have a hotel in Vegas? I think it was off the strip. Yeah. It was off the strip down near Stratosphere area. I haven't been here in a while. Yeah, well, Stratosphere was where I broadcast out of, but Wynn is up the, up the street quite a bit. Wynn, Wynn and Trump's is pretty close. I didn't know Trump actually had a hotel there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, he doesn't own it, and obviously, no, no. somebody's paying him to use the name on the front of the building. And obviously, uh, who knows if it's still there, you know? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if it's still in his name, but it was because we used to go to Vegas all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I wish Robert uh, called tonight. Uh, I guess he's got something else to do because uh, last night we had somebody who calls this show from time to time say something nasty in the chat, okay? And then after, it was, uh, after uh, Robert went after him, we didn't say him by name, but went after him uh, because he was a couple of nights ago quite upset with uh, this guy's performance of uh, digging in his backyard and crap like that. Um, the, he wrote on there, well, I get the picture. I'm out of here. Bye. Okay. And as soon as I get off the air, I go over to my Facebook page and I'm down one subscriber. Hmm. And then I go over to my YouTube page page and i'm down one subscriber i wonder who that was <laughs> you know and maybe it's just a coincidence you know i have no idea but anyway i just thought i would i wanted and to then, mention that to robert because he would get a great deal of happiness out of that fact and then you know? 10 hookers tried to join <laughs> Right? Didn't you always say that? Whenever you went under 5,000, you said all of a sudden all these hookers were on well, there. I, trying to get uh, I, I, there are people who are waiting to come on. So I immediately mm -hmm. just uh, let one of them come on as a subscriber, you know. Mm -hmm. And so if uh, I've always had 5,000, which is the max. So right. if right. you want to leave me, fine, but you're going to have a damn hard time ever getting back on. Yeah, it took me a little while. Oh, did you have a problem? Uh, yeah, yeah, and it was when you were talking about that all the time. You'd say, "Yeah, you're getting all these hookers whenever you, whenever you dropped one." Yeah, when every drop one, so all I of would a sudden, check every couple of days, and yeah, yeah. I got them. but now I'm getting the hookers even when I got five thousand. So you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously I'm that handsome. You know, I'm that much of a uh, of, 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 of man meat that they uh, they want to get a hold of me. You know. 
Either that or they see me as desperate. One or the other. I haven't figured that one out, you know. But, uh, oh, man. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. There's something in the air here. My wife is itching like crazy. My eyes have been tearing. Mm -hmm. uh, what? What? My mother's been itching too. No joke. I'm not lying. About yeah, that. yeah. There's. Some... I gave a Benadryl. My Benadryl. Yeah, yeah. I've been okay. There's something. I stripped the bed and everything. I thought maybe it was the. I think there's something in the air. Uh, you know, we. It's not pollen, but no. I mean, and I my eyes are tearing and uh, my nose was dripping. It's not dripping now, but it was. So I took a non-drowsy allergy oh. pill. I got the you ever take a non-drowsy allergy pill? I got the antihistamine ones. They knocked me out. I like, slept for the rest of the day. Really? <laughs> I mean, what do they mean, non-drowsy? You know? I mean, if it were truly non-drowsy, it would also be not take care of allergies, right? Because yeah. you need that, that drowsy thing in it. Have you ever taken a, have you ever taken a, a, a medical Benadryl? Oh, man. Talk about knocking you out. Really? And then you're no good for the rest of the next day. You're just a zombie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, so my uh, when I do this a lot at night, folks, it's because my eyes are tearing. But in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have my eye operation. They're going to lift the lids. Um, and I don't know if I'm how many days, if I'm going to be off. I'd probably be off for at least one night, but I don't know how much I'm going to be off mm -hmm. on that one because, you know. They go in and they suture up your eyes or something. I don't know. It's like a two-hour operation, I read. Wow. Uh, you know. Why, have you had that, Jeffrey? No. No. Oh, no. Okay, because you were kind of nodding yes like you know. No, but I'm just thinking about how the surgery is. I mean, yeah, well, I, yeah. I don't Tell know. Put some, don't put some I mean, Botox in there, too. Not, yeah, no, they don't. They don't. It's not. It's <laughs> put not, some Botox and, you know, on the. Well, it's everywhere. not going to do anything about the, the bags under my eyes. That's, you know, that's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. But this, I this is covered by insurance because it's a medical procedure that I need. Because, really? well, because as my eyes droop like this, dirt and stuff get in them, and then they get infected. Right. So, so about twice a year, I have to go to the eye doctor and have them give me some, uh, you know, some antibiotic for my eyes. So I'm just having it taken care of, you know, you know, I. What the hell? You know, I mean, I've had every other kind of operation this year, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, hello there, John Larkin. How are you? Oh, man, I've had a headache for like three days. It's weird. Really? Yeah. Mm. But, you know, I've been checking my temperature and it's not up. Yeah. And I don't have like a sore throat. But I've, I got, it feels like there's uh, like needles all in the back of my head, you know? Really? I mean, it, it, real sensitive i've never had anything like that before hmm. it's like just like these needles like i'm like i'm laying my head down on needles Ooh, that's a haircut that could no, be it, 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 it could be some kind of, <laughs> it could be that's some what kind of did it. what <laughs> yeah the haircuts what did it maybe <laughs> yeah might be bed bugs or something in this apartment. Maybe. No, I don't. I don't think that's what it is. It could be something just kind of temporarily neurological. Yeah. You know. I mean. Maybe. How old are you? How are you? I'm sixty-two. Are there are there any bites back there that you see? Like. No, like, you got hair, you asshole. Yeah. No bald spot or anything. <laughs> no. <Jeez. laughs> Six big <laughs> head of hair. So yeah. You don't see any red marks it's or anything. Joke. No, no, no. You've got all your hair. You must not be Jewish. Yeah, I'm Irish. <laughs> Although, look yeah. at look at Jeff. Jeff's got a good head of hair. Do you have Do you have a bald spot uh, back there? I don't think so. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> and my my business manager Gary is Jewish, very Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, he has the most lush head of hair I've ever seen in my life. Mm. But of course, me. <laughs> he took it. <laughs> Alex, you, he took you were it. balding early, though, weren't you, yeah. Alex? Not really. I mean, if early is forty, yeah, mm -hmm. you know. But I wasn't. I wasn't. It didn't completely. It didn't get to the point where I did the preemptive baldness by shaving what I had off. In other mm -hmm. words, I didn't want. I didn't want to start getting that Danny DeVito look or the comb over kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You, you know. The comb over? 
I mean, I could have as much hair as Trump if I did that swirly that he does with his. <laughs> he said it's a three-stage. They say it's a three-stage comb-over. I don't know how the hell that happens. It's amazing. That, it's, you know, it's what, the one I, thing that he can do pretty cool. What bothers me is I had a guy I knew. His name was Bob Sarlat. He was a comedian. Is he still alive? Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. Anyway, uh, Sarlat um, was... Um, had a really great head of hair, okay? And uh, mm -hmm. once he made a joke about me losing mine. And I said, the only thing worse than losing your hair is still having your hair, and it looks like a hair piece. <laughs> Do you ever notice people like that where it, they, they, they absolutely have their hair, but it looks like a hair piece? Yeah. Alex, yeah. does Tucker Carlson have a hairpiece? Because sometimes I watch him. I'm trying to figure out if that's real or not. I don't. I haven't seen Tucker in a long time. And when I worked with him, uh, I never was in the same studio with him. He was it out in New Jersey. Mean, what? You know, what? Like the way it sits on his head. It looks fake. Really? I it, well, I mean, it could be. You know. But if you're gonna wear a hairpiece, you know, like yeah. you know, the people you don't think wore a hairpiece, but they wore a hairpiece. Bogart. Wore a hairpiece. Really? Uh, yeah. Benny wore a hairpiece. He wore a hairpiece? Yeah. Wow. Steve yeah. Martin, right? Uh, Steve Martin. I don't really? know about Steve Martin <laughs> then. I know about him now. Okay. Uh -huh. But here's what you do. What those people did in those days is when they made a hairpiece for somebody, they made them look like they were losing their hair. Hair. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. you didn't yeah. suspect that it was a hairpiece. So they built in the widow's peak for, uh, for, for yeah. Bogart. Okay. Wow. And uh, and that's what you should do. But I mean, what Trump's doing? Just cut it off, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear he can't. And the reason is, a few years back, he had. Are you ready for this? This is disgusting. He had a scalp reduction. What is that? It's where they. In order they, to make you have more hair, I don't know exactly what they do. Don't tell me they dig they, a hole they, in they cut, they, uh, they, 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 like, make your scalp they, tighter. They, they take so a like section of it out <clears throat> and then, you, you know, stitch it together so that if he doesn't have his hair like it is or wear a hairpiece mm -hmm. or something, he has a big scar going oh, down well, the front of his head. <clears throat> Actually, he would look like, uh, to be honest with you, a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Need I be that gross in saying that? But it's true. Yeah, French you know? I said. <laughs> yeah there, there's a couple of guys in the car scene, the, you know, the older generation, and that I just saw that Sunday. And yeah, he had like the perfect, you know, gray hair spiked up to here, and it was all fake. It was really yeah, bad. I mean, <laughs> uh, if you're going, is somebody? Um, I had a comedian I knew who was bald, um, and um, what he did was he hit me to something when I was starting to go bald. And I was I was kind of saving every... Guys like to save every last vestige of the hair they've got there <laughs> until all they've got is this puff in the front or something, you know. And he said to me, shave it off. I said, but I still got it. He said, shave it off. And then cut your hair short on the sides. Mm. He said, I, he says, I call it preemptive baldness. And that's what it is. In other words, if you're going bald, then celebrate that baldness and actually, you know, I mean, and, and so I sat there shaving off this hair, that what little hair was on the top that I was like holding on to with dear life, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I said, I, I look better now. My girlfriend yeah. at the time said I look better and all the other women in my life said I look better. And uh, so I, you know. Half of my friends are black, and they all shave their head a while back. Mm -hmm. And I say, you guys are so lucky you look so cool bald because <laughs> the white people don't look good bald. <laughs> they got all the cool look. You know, when it was in style, they shaved it all off, and I say, you guys are lucky. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's good, uh, you know, that we, you know, that it's that way, uh, if you do it that way. It's more... It, it, it's not as fake. And that's why Trump looks terrible. I mean, it's horrible. Uh, it looks like 
Did you ever go down to Foster's Freeze? Remember Foster's Freeze? The, the swirly ice cream place here yeah, in New yeah, York. Yeah. Uh, Carvel <laughs> does the same thing. His hair oh, looks like a Carvel one? cone. Okay, yeah. you know. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they showed a they showed a picture of the first time I saw it, but it's probably an old picture of Trump going up the you know up the stairs to the Air Force One, and he has a big umbrella because it looks like it's raining, so he doesn't want to get his hair wet. And yeah. Baron is behind him, not covered at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, not covered what with the the umbrella? So it's it's raining oh, out there, oh. and he's got an umbrella holding it for himself, and it's yes. a big umbrella. And then yes. you know, Baron's behind him, you know, in the rain going up the stairs. Oh, he, he doesn't like to get in situations, supposedly, where there's a heavy wind. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has, you know, it has occasionally flopped forward. I mean, there's, there's not enough hairspray on Earth, you know, <laughs> to keep that thing in, you know. But it is, I think, a, a masterpiece of, uh, of architecture. And, uh, yeah. you know, if it were a bridge, we would tribute the bridge maker for just the perfect balance that he's put in there. $70,000 a year to keep it, right? 70000 yeah. Well, did you hear <laughs> today? Right this is a good one. This is really a good one. Everybody stand by to get pissed off. Okay. So Trump uh, hosts some people occasionally down at Mar-a-Lago. And when he hosts some kind of dignitary at Mar-a-Lago, he charges it off to the government. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so he held this thing. I can't remember. I think it was the Prime Minister of Japan was down there, Mar a Lago, and they held dinners and things like that and lodging and everything. And he presented the bill to the United States of America, and they had everything like lodging so much, food so much, and it was pretty extraordinarily high. This was the item that just galled me and should gall every single American. And while it isn't a major expense, the fact that they even considered it an expense was amazing to say the least. It was, you know, no, no. Three dollars for a glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know how many people had water that day, but that could have amounted to, you know, three hundred, four hundred dollars worth of water. And if they, if somebody, can I get another glass, please? Well, mm -hmm. that's another three dollars on the taxpayer's <laughs> pocketbook. Yeah. So um, Jerry, Jerry stranded all his uh, his um, followers out at that airport in Omaha. Yeah, in Omaha, and it was and it was freezing out there, and seven of them had to be rushed to the hospital with pneumonia. Oh, really? <laughs> they had no way to get back. They had to park like three miles away. Three miles and, away, yeah. And buses took them in, but then when he left, the buses were all fucked up, and they couldn't get all them people out of there. Because you know they all wanted to get out of there all at once. Yeah. Well, so, bad, bad some, enough. Some of them had to sit, stand there in the cold until twelve o'clock at night. Well, bad <laughs> enough with uh, bad enough with uh, 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 COVID. You know, and the fact that he has these super spreader events. Yeah. Uh, a, a pneumonia. Now, what's going to happen? They're going to get pneumonia, and if they then come down with COVID, that's going to be a comorbidity. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but they, he he doesn't care, they, and uh, he they, he made a brag the other day about oh, do you see the small amount of people that Obama's getting and Biden is getting at their rallies? Yes, you moron. There are less people there because they won't let enough in that they're going to be a super spreader event. He wants <laughs> you know uh, he looks upon the fact that he gets these masses of people as mm -hmm. being a sign of how popular he is. And I got news for him. He's going to have a rude awakening come November 3rd. I hope, Alex, I hope you're right. I can't. If he wins, I'll vomit. I really will. Vomit. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm, will you I'm do that here it. on the air? Because it will be a kind of a catharsis <laughs> for the rest yeah, of us. Yeah, we'd like to see if he wins. Off. He's going to be, it's going to be, he's going to gloat something fierce. Gloat. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, John. Did, did you notice when he, uh, when he signs in, when he, when he takes the oath for the uh, Supreme, Supreme Court nominee, mm -hmm. They do it. They, they they do it. Do it at the uh, White House. I mean, at the White House. But then they do the official one at the Supreme Court with nobody there. So mm -hmm. the, the one at the White House isn't even required. Nobody does that. That's just a thing for show, so he can stand there and get in the and shot for a photo op. Because yeah, the official one yeah. is 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 with the uh, 
I guess the the Chief Justice at the uh, Supreme Court. Yeah. President Thomas. What a fucking dick. What a fuck. Well, no other president ever did anything like that. Well, uh, yes, I think they have, actually, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I think one is kind of ceremonial with the president so that it has some kind <clears throat> of a, uh, yeah, a, a, bless, a, swear them a, in. a blessing just, on it. Yeah, no, they did a swearing in, and then they went and oh, did they another swearing right. in. Who, what president had two swearing ins? I'm trying to remember now, because they got it wrong the first time. Was it Johnson after Kennedy? I, I can't remember. I think it was that whoever was swearing him in uh, didn't give the whole oath. It was Obama. It was it Obama? Yeah, when he was uh, when he was first elected. Yeah. The, 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 John Roberts screwed it up. Oh, he screwed it up, and then they had yeah. to go back. So and, they had to do it the next day, do it over. Yeah, but not in front of an audience. They just did right, it yeah. so that it could be official and that it, mm -hmm. you know, it could be, yeah. for the record that he said, I, you know, do you solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution yeah. of the United States? Uh, I'm surprised that when Obama, I mean, Obama, when uh, um, uh, Trump took the oath, uh, that the Bible didn't catch mm -hmm. into flames. You know, burst into flames. I mean, uh, it was, yeah. it, 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 you know, but I mean, you, so it it, it 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 does happen. They do that for a ceremonial <laughs> kind of thing, like the president is congratulating you, and then they have that little reception. So they have another super spreading event, uh, yeah. and they have a little reception, and then uh, you know the next day. You know, she was there today. She had her first day at the Supreme Court. She was already on the job. You know. Oh yeah. I, does she have to go to HR first and sign some papers? <laughs> and stuff? Here's your packet. Uh, yeah, here's your packet, and here are your benefits. Yeah, uh, these are benefits, by the way, that you will uh, get that you will deny other people when you vote on Obamacare. Okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, uh, uh, they um, what, what what was it? Where was I going with that? <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that. Well, Alex, thank you I very got... much, folks. I've been here all night. Okay. Anyway. No. Alex, I got something funny to tell you. What? My brother was in the city with his girlfriend, and they were. she was waiting online to vote. Mm -hmm. And so he ex he was he, he got off of lunch because he had to go into the city for, you know, for a day to check on the guys. Mm -hmm. So he, one of the guys online, one of his friends, says to one of the older people, mm -hmm. how long have you been waiting? You know what the old lady said? Four fucking years. <laughs> 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 you told me I was laughing. That Somebody is one. This. Did she really say that? She said that four fucking years. <laughs> wow. Did you go off and vote yet? No, I'm going to do it Tuesday. I'm going to take my mom up because the school's right down the block. Oh, okay. So you're going to do the, you know, going to do it on yeah. the day. On the day. Yeah. We're, uh, you know, we're, uh, the, they say that, uh, what is it, 70 million people so far? Maybe? Yeah, 70 million. Yeah. 70 million. 56% of who voted in 2016 already. So far. And this is so just far. The, this just is so far. Yeah, this yeah. is still yeah. the middle of the week. And <clears throat> in most states, they've got to like Saturday or something. To, and uh, Pennsylvania, it's like 65% of the vote so far mm -hmm. has been Democrat. Oh, really? In Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah. Hey, Alex, do you, am I getting worried for not? I, I'm worried he, you don't think he'll win, do you? I mean, I'm, I'm getting worried. Well, we all want to say, hey, let's not put a curse on it. But, I don't think he's going to win, but he's going to try to steal it. You've seen a lot of elections. Do you think he has this? You don't think he could do this, right? This is not Hillary over again. I uh, no, uh, because the reason is that when Hillary happened, we were looking at all the wrong stuff. Okay? We were looking at the poll numbers as to how many people were going to be voting for, yeah. for Hillary. And believe it or not, the polls were absolutely right. In fact, yeah. they were a little off. They said she was going to win by 2.5 million and she won by three. But nobody sat there and said, what does the electoral map look like? And that's where the difference came and that's how Trump became president. Well, this time, everybody on television is going, and this electoral count is, and this electoral count is, and if he gets this and she gets, he gets it, they're not even looking at the popular vote now. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, one interesting thing is that the Republicans have only won the majority of the vote 
once out of the past six elections, but they've got to appoint six out of the nine Supreme Court justices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, they, they've lost. They've lost the popular vote. Like seven of the of the last nine presidential elections, they've lost it. Did they yeah. lose it? Wait a minute. They 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 did they, they did they lose it with Bush or did Bush? They lost the uh, first one. The 2000, they lost with Bush. The only one of the, that he's talking about, the only one that they won was Bush in 2004. But yeah. Bush's dad didn't get them, uh, didn't no, get they, the, they We're not talking, before. we didn't go back that far. We're not going to go back that far. Yeah, we're only, we're talking the last nine. So that would be, yeah. that, would, that would be. Well, wait a minute. Two, they're only, since, 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 uh, since uh, Bush Jr., there's only been one. No, there was oh. Obama. And Obama uh, twice. Well, there was Obama, but Bush. he wasn't a Republican. Uh, Nixon, uh, right? And Clinton. That's what we're saying. When Obama Clinton won. Makes six. So, yeah, I guess it does. It goes all the way back to Bush Sr. Yeah, it's got to go back even further than that. It probably, uh, 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 I, I, didn't Bush Sr. get a majority? I can't remember. Yeah, he got a majority. Yeah. 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 So that's one. I do but know that... It, where the electoral college and the the popular vote differ were different, and where it's always come into contention now. This it, we've had more problems with the electoral college in the last couple of years than we ever did yeah. in the past. Um, was of course Gore versus uh, Gore v. Bush, which was a, a clusterfuck. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there ever was one. You remember watching the hanging chads and yeah. you know trying and I quite frankly you know I think Gore gave up too easily. Yeah, he actually won Florida. He yeah. should have been president. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, there was the, some... the Democrats always are kind of like, uh, well, look, I don't want to make trouble. <laughs> you know, uh, well, let's get out of the way. Well, hey, make yeah. trouble. That's what yeah, Trump yeah. does for a business. Mm -hmm. You do it too. You know. Um, I, 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 uh, I, I'm amazed. I'm really amazed at them. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it hopefully, I'm, I, well, the one thing I'm going to be glad about come Tuesday, mm -hmm. okay, is that, um, we don't have to talk about this anymore. Oh my gosh. Speak Gee, what are we going to talk about? I think he's going to have a meltdown. Hi, how how you doing, Jeff? How you doing, Brian? How's the kid, Brian? Uh, have, have her come in. Let's talk to her for an hour. Yeah, she can have. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, so. I mean, what are we I mean, I mean, it's going to be about Biden repairing stuff. I mean, you well, know, he's got a lot of stuff to fix. But you know, this president has ninety days to fuck up the country really good, yeah. and I think he will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Trump, right, so what could he do? Trump that's can really give, give uh, us entertainment. What? What would you say, Jeff? What can he do? Let's assume he, he doesn't win, mm -hmm. and meanwhile, he's got a couple of months to do what the hell he wants to do. Yeah. What would he do? Well, anybody want to bat that question around? He could start a war. He could start a he's war. commander in he, chief. He, he can, he, he can uh, start pardoning, pardoning himself for all kinds of shit. You know? He could probably resign and then have Pence pardon him for everything. Yeah. I think he made continue on the biden trail though try to try to you know i think um, he's gonna i think he's gonna forfeit biden's he, win here's what i'm saying he, well he's, he's gonna pull he's, the whole thing into the courts and try to steal the thing yeah yeah but i, mean, I let, 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 let's let's assume that america gives him the big finger okay uh mm -hmm. and there's no even questioning the election it's like too much that you can go to the supreme court and you know i'm going to argue all the mail-in ballots well it looks right now like the mail-in ballots aren't going to be a major factor in this election it's the pre-voting that is and those people went to the polls yep in fact most people want to go to the polls because they don't want him to be able to say that it was a mail-in ballot fiasco okay um uh, but let's say he, let's say he, there's no question that he didn't get reelected and he's going to be leaving on the 20th. What can he do in that time? Well, to begin he with, he, refuse. He, oh. he can do nothing about COVID, right. which is about what he's been doing already. 
I mean, I'd like Biden to be able to get in there on the first day and start passing things and making declarations and telling people put mm -hmm. on the goddamn masks and, you know, let's shut this down and let's open this up and, you know, really get roll up his sleeve. And get, but he's got 90 days before he can do that. In the meantime, how many people can die in 90 days? Yeah, 100,000 people could die. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I, you, you ask him what kind of uh, bad stuff could he do? That's very simply one of them, you know. He can refuse to sign a COVID stimulus bill. Yep, that's uh, that, that too. He could, knowing Trump, what he would do is he would just decide, I'm going to get even with the American public for not voting for me. Yep. You know? And he's going to take it personally as he takes everything. You know, he thinks COVID was invented to disrupt his campaign. You know, he goes out to all these uh, these uh, speeches now and he's going, COVID, COVID, COVID. You know, it's nothing. As soon as the election is over with, you won't hear about COVID. Oh, yeah? Really? Really? Oh, my you God. Know. You hadn't been right by anything Listen, else. Listen, I hate to say this, but, you know, we have one person in this in this mix tonight who actually is making a profit off of COVID. Uh, <laughs> 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 who, who could that be? Uh, and, and it's Brian, uh, because he has a company that makes this little item, and they put your saliva, your nose goo in there, right? Yes. And then they put this in a machine... And the machine says, hey, he doesn't have COVID, or hey, he has COVID, or hey, what kind of snot is this? Anyway, um, but that's, you, you know, they, that's they've made, mo they've made money tall. off of it, but it's not like they haven't done it for to a good purpose. You know, we're not giving you a bad time because you're making money off of it. You know, How can I, I do one of those tests? Huh? What was that? How can I, how can I get one of those tests? Well, to begin with, you got to get one of these, okay? And then, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, and then you have to spend how many millions of dollars on the equipment to read what's in here? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we have a new one coming out, the Omni One, so it's going to be... Well, they have, they they have the home, the things, home yeah. version that's coming out like uh, like the yeah. uh, electric like toothbrush. Theranos, like Theranos tried to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just I just don't want to get one of those things up my nose again, you know. Yeah, Why? you have to. You didn't yeah, like this one. You have to. I I haven't had one of those tests yet because Marjorie keeps going off and getting them because she has to to go see her doctors. So when she takes the test and I if she doesn't have it, I assume, you know, just keep making out with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, then if she if she doesn't have it, you're okay. Well, I sleep in bed with her and she snores. You know, that's enough to give it to me. <laughs> I get a test tomorrow. Uh -oh. They won't let me. I'm such a wimp. You, you, with all the coke I did when I was a kid, you'd think oh. I'd be able to do that. <laughs> well, My listen, friend. Yeah, but when they go in there and scrape around, see if they can find any of the residue, you know? Uh, it's it's yeah. been probably 35 years yeah. since I did that shit. Yeah. The first thing my, my, my party friend said was, if they give us that test, you know what they're going to find up there. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> no, I have a little cough today because of stuff in the air. You know, I don't have a temperature. I, I've been that's good. I, uh, ninety-seven eight. You know, that was good. It, it, one time I got up this morning and I was like ninety-six something, and I went, "Am I dead?" You know, but um, anyway, so we're we're gonna have, of course, our big uh, election night show here. I hope it's a nice. Show. Oh, oh, that's right. I'm going to order some good, tea for the election, I think. Yeah, I'm going to start off the first half hour with a special guest to talk about the the election. And then we will go into it. And what I'm thinking of doing is signing off at midnight on the audio channel so Jack can go and do his show. But I'm thinking of c continuing the show if it looks like mm -hmm. nothing's really settled for a while uh, for at least an hour or so. So yeah. we can, yeah. That'd be good. You, you need a green screen so you can do all the graphics, you know? We could You could do all the states and the colors that's turning. Well, you know, you know uh, how many here watch MSNBC? I guess most of you guys watch it. I, I don't like, I can't, it was, I can't tolerate them. I, I can't tolerate them either. But anyway, the, the guy that I cannot stand is Steve Kornacki. 
with his goddamn board, you know, uh, and and uh, and pushing on the state and saying, well, if he wins this one and he wins this one, well, what's your temperature? Ninety-eight one. Ooh, better go see a doctor. <laughs> That's not mm. bad. Make it time. Well, normal. occasionally these thermometers don't register right, and, and mine turn different colors depending on how, you know, it's green until it's 99, then it's orange, and then it goes red if you're, like, over 100, okay? And, what's, too, what, what's, hmm? what's medium, about 98 or 99? 98.6 no, is considered no, a normal no, human temperature. Yeah, but oh, you, okay. you can go as high as 99, you know, yeah. um, and, and not worry about it. Uh, but um, occasionally this thing goes goes orange on me. And I go, what? And it says like 99.1 or something like that. And I put, I take it again and it goes down to 98. Mm. You know, so the thermometers aren't <clears throat> completely accurate. I find I have to take it like two or three times to, well, here, I'll show you. Wait a minute. Like blood pressure. Blood pressure I take in this little bit. Yeah, I take it again, and that's good. Oh, well, that changes mm -hmm. continually throughout the day. I mean, I was told yeah. by this doctor yesterday when they were checking out my balance and stuff. He said, "If I, I said I get lightheaded sometimes when I've been lying down for a while and I get up, and he says that's because your blood pressure dips. Because mm -hmm. it, it, when you're getting up, it just it drops, and you have a momentary drop in in your. Uh, so it, it, your blood pressure changes throughout the day." Um, and and doctors at uh, doctors' offices. Now, see here. Wait a minute. Let me turn this off. See if I turn it on. See it goes through all the different colors. There's the red. There you see. And there's the, and, and then I put it in my mouth. And, mm -hmm. Oh, oh actually, you're oh. like a raver. Hmm? <laughs> all the different colors. Hmm? Is, is that the one where you can send it over the internet and they collect it all, the data? No, uh, I'm I'm ninety eight one. Yeah, well, same here. Wait a minute, but hold on a second. Hold on a second. 95. If I, let me, huh? 95? Oh. Well, here we go. That's too let me cool. see here. Let me do it again now. Watch what happens. See, this is what we'll be doing after the election, just taking each other's temperature. <laughs> I have the electrical mm. ones. 98. See, it's 98. Now, if I do it again, it'll probably go down to 97.9. But I think I'm in a good range, right, Brian? Yeah. Mm. Our alarms go off at uh, 100, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, my blood pressure's... Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. There we go. 97.8. So which one am I supposed to believe? Yeah. Rolling average. <laughs> Let me put it this way. I haven't got COVID, okay? Um, but um, but it, 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 as I say, it changes a lot, you know, from moment to moment. So I, I, and, I haven't, and then that thing I got with my head, it, it goes, it went bad. But uh, the ones you put up to your head and then, you know, it reads your... Well, oh, I got that one, yeah. But that, those things, I, I'm told, actually go uh, cooler than you really are. You know, it's a different kind of temperature they're taking, but they're looking for, you know, a certain range, whatever. So, you know, we're, we're going to be a whole uh, uh, um, society of people taking their temperatures. Oh, yeah. You know, and if you're extra kinky rectally, you know. Well, hold on a second. I have to blow my nose. I'm going to sneeze. You didn't hear that because I turned my mic off. Anybody else want to blow their nose? I can turn the mic off for you. So. Oh, thank you. No. Yeah. I can also uh, mute you, too. Yeah, any one of you. Uh, but um, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm going to be glad when this is all over with. You know, maybe we can just get back to having a nice little friendly discussion about other things. You know, what movie did you see? No, because there are no movies Climate to go change. see. Oh, yeah. That, we, that's we, not going to happen that quick. What? Just remember, there's all kinds of people have to start taking this pill. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you mean, for the vaccine? For the vaccine. Well, it's not a pill, it's a shot. 
Yeah, Here's the thing. Those. Here's what our governor's been saying. He says if everybody <coughs> thinks the idea of a vaccine is 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 an idea that's going to solve the whole problem, first you got to figure out a way to get the vaccine out to 300 million people in this yep. country, and then you have to figure out the way to get it out a second time because it's going to take two shots. Yep. Okay. Oh, and then. Yeah, but Trump said he already figured it out. He's oh, got the military. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got a general who's going to do it. Yeah, right. He's, he's got a plan. Yeah. He's got a plan. Yeah. You get one oh, shot, you Jeff? get another one. Jeff? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, my, my daughter works at uh, Massachusetts Medical. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just put together a presentation mm -hmm. on what... What are the changes and when is it going to happen and who's going to get it first? Mm -hmm. And guess what, Alex, you're going to be in the, in the list, the early list. What's what's oh, yeah. the, what's the list? Well, first, it's first responders, right? Yep. Older people. Well, I'm older people. That's why you're on the list. Oh, you say I'm, I'm, good in, list. Oh, I'm on the good list. I'm not on the naughty yeah, on the list. list. I'm on the good list. That's good right. <laughs> Tony's on the bad list. He's on the, uh, yeah. Brian, bad list. No, I'm Brian, bad. Well, Brian, yeah. Brian, Brian's on the bad <laughs> list. But uh, Charlie, I, and and perhaps uh, uh, John are on the on the good list. So 60. Just turned 63. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll put you they're close to the front of the line. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is that they, they say that uh, uh, if, if we can't, for instance, get the, you know, do something as simple as, as, as tests, okay, and do them in any great number, you know, uh, our, our governor said, look, you know, we did 129,000 tests yesterday. But it's going to be an entirely different thing to be able to administer what he what did he say forty thousand twenty thousand in New York and then another twenty thousand a few months later, a million rather twenty million and twenty well, million. Yeah, yeah. I mean everybody's going to be in lockdown. And you know the president says, "Oh, you know what we're doing? We just made up a million batches of it." <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's so yeah. You know what's that going to do? They're going to have the the military. What's thing? that going to do for New York? Yes, Charlie. They're running low on the flu shot already yeah. over here. Yeah. I had to take my mother to uh, to Kifu in the pharmacy to get the shot yeah. Friday. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, Charlie. Uh, I read that we've only done 130 million tests total since March. Yeah. It's taken us what eight months to do 100 and yeah. and, and and 30 million. How are we going to do 300 million? And and do it fast enough that it kills the spread of the uh, of the virus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be that easy just because we've got it is what he's saying. And he's saying certainly under this president, it's not even going to be a factor. You know, I mean, this guy wouldn't even know how to do it. Yeah, uh, you know. So I mean, it's it's really going to be a, a and and on top of that. There's then the other thing that California has said, and I think the, uh, uh, New York has said, we're not going to allow the vaccine to be used in our states until we have a committee of our own doctors look at it and make sure it's safe. Yeah, California yeah. is doing Good. that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, I mean, my question is, let's say, the, the, <clears throat> let's say the vaccine comes out tomorrow. Let's say Dr. Fauci says, looks good to me. Would you take it? I don't, I don't hear a big, giant surge of yeses here well, well dr to fauci to says it i would say yeah 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 if he's standing next to trump yeah yeah but if he's standing next yeah. to trump in the in the conference no i wouldn't take it then no he, <laughs> okay. if he's by himself standing yeah i would take it i'm not gonna believe it <laughs> and by the way by, by, the, by the way just yeah you know, and this is not uh, uh you know uh, assumptions or anything like that this is for real um, if we have one, it's only going to be 50% effective. Yeah. So cool. what do we do for the other 50%? Wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's like uh, mm -hmm. the head of the CDC said, uh, he said, uh, I would be feel safer using a mask than using a vaccine. Yeah. I, I feel better protected. Wear a mask now, I think. 
You know, by the way, I was thinking about, oh, here I go sneezing again. See, I don't know what there is in this apartment that's causing this. And it's an allergy sneeze. Um, um, and now what was I going to say? God, I'm so out of it tonight. Uh, uh, oh, well, I forgot. I completely forgot. I just had a brain fart. Oh, we were talking about New York and the doctors. Uh, yeah, we were, we were talking about getting getting the uh, the uh, I, I vaccine. Forgot, I forgot now, but the, the, quite, the only thing good is they're using a couple of major companies are using our equipment to do their testing. Yeah, for the vaccine, so I feel a little confident there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the fact is that the vaccine is is going to have to be. Vetted, but all I'm saying is, oh, I know what I was going to say. I suddenly realized there was a, there's been a benefit to this whole wearing a mask thing. And I would say that everybody should wear a mask. And they go, well, I don't know. It's my constitutional right not to, and I don't have to, and whatever. Do you realize that this is also not only flu season, this is cold season. They call it mm. cold and flu season. Yeah. And if you wear yeah. a mask, you're not going to catch somebody else's cold, okay? Yeah. Because those germs are this big, mm -hmm. all yeah. right? Yeah. So it's a good reason. I I suddenly realized, I'm, am I going to get a cold this winter? Probably not, unless I, you know, catch pneumonia going to a Trump rally. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I saw a sign that said. I said, no, uh, I said, wear a mask or your freedom. They're like saying either you wear a mask or you're not going to have your freedom. I'm like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> well, again, you know, I, I hate to constantly drub on this drum or beat on this drum. But when did it become a political issue? Yeah, you know, really, not even and, and, and I'd say, hey, if you don't want to wear a mask, then you can die of COVID if you want to. But the fact is that what you're doing is you're not protecting me by not wearing a mask. You know, this Did is the most, the most social thing we have come up with, where I wear a mask to protect you and you wear a mask to protect me. Wow, isn't that a nice trade off? Hmm? Did you hear what Jared said to uh, Woodward? Yes, uh, tell, tell yes. everybody. Um, yeah, so he was saying. Uh, that Trump was saying that they were going to use the uh, blame it on the governors. Let the governors deal with COVID, mm -hmm. but then you'll bring back the economy by saying to open everything up and you'll be the good guy at the end. Well, he also told Woodward that uh, my father is back in charge and the doctors are out. Oh, my. Yeah. God. Yeah. Was it and was that from May also or was that newer? Uh, that was part of uh, all the stuff that Woodward has done. Woodward I don't know why Woodward has decided to slowly leak all this stuff out, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it's really... They must just yeah. look... <laughs> they trust Woodward so, so much. No. Yeah, we wouldn't want the doctors in charge during a pandemic. Well, this is, yeah. this is what's yeah, interesting. Is Here's what's interesting about, so about Woodward. <laughs> Why would you even let yourself be interviewed by Bob Woodward? I know. Let alone have him put everything on tape. Tape. Okay? Yeah. And the reason is Trump is, has so much ego. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. he was willing to let him do yeah. it. And, willing to, and, and he felt everything he was saying was perfect and wonderful and terrific. Not realizing it was going to come back and bite him in the ass. I mean, it, it's been used uh, as an anti-Trump uh, election ploy from from the get-go. Because the minute he said all that stuff, Biden's up there saying, well, look what your president said. You know. Yep. Uh, I guess my last question, we got enough time to answer this. How good a job do you think uh, uh, Trump uh, Biden is doing? Good. Great. But as, you know, I mean, you can't you can't have crowds. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. I didn't think he would be this good as a candidate. Mm -hmm. But he has hit every note perfectly. He has never yeah. been off course. He's never. I, I've been waiting for the big gaffe where everybody can come back and say, "See what he said." No, no. The only thing you have to be careful about now when you're running for president of the United States is. 
that every statement you make has to be complete because what I see are ads with with Biden in them for Trump, that where Biden is going, I'm going to raise taxes on everyone. Yeah. He they don't finish it where he says over oh, four hundred thousand oh. dollars yeah. a year, yeah. but no, <laughs> cuts them off. And they did the same thing with Fauci, you know. Yep. Uh, all Trump can do. He's just a dirty fucking po dirty politician. Yeah, well, but I mean, all politicians can get dirty. But I mean, this Trump's is Trump. this is it, it, to me when you take somebody completely out of context to say that they they're going to raise your taxes and he it's not what he said at all. Yes, Charlie. Uh, I think Biden could have done a better job of of uh, he should have had a commercial out there with Trump saying because he said this back in March and April yeah. saying that he was going to. Cut Social Security and Medicare if he's reelected. He said that on multiple occasions. And you know, you know what I would, Biden's you, you, not playing you, those tapes. You know what I'd do if I were Biden? I would hire all the guys over at the Lincoln Project to just do my entire ad campaign. <laughs> <laughs> because they come out, they come out with about four of them a week, five of them a That's week. Good stuff, too. I think it came out with five of them today. Yeah, they've been okay. And they've been hitting everything from Lindsey Graham. To, you know, and they've been running. And there was a version of one spot of, called Morning in America, which was a play on the old uh, uh, Goldwater uh, ad of it's morning. Oh, no, wait a minute. Was it, was it Goldwater? Was it? No, no, it wasn't Goldwater. It was Reagan. It's Morning Reagan. in America. Yeah. Only it's morning, M O U R I, you know. Yeah. And, and they did one for every state that's in contention. But it's the same spot. It's just got different pictures of the state. Yeah. Um, but they did a lot of those. I mean, so they've been hitting the states. They've been hitting the Senate. They've been hitting the Congress. Uh, and they've been, of course, hitting the main campaign. And also just that relentless pursuit of Trump, where they've been saying this. Um, yeah. Really so the, the only the only thing I would say is, do we think that he should be out more? You know what? He has to be the good mm. cop. Mm. Okay? He has to be the good cop. Um, I think he's sending Obama out on the trail to be the mm. bad cop. Ob yeah. Ob Obama is just savaging Trump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and no one will hold it against him because Trump has constantly gone after him. So they'll yeah. say, well, he deserves it, you know? He's just Trump, getting even. Trump threw a big hissy fit because they... Uh, they put Obama on Fox, and he got all mad about that. <laughs> hey, listen, it was a great he speech. Owns Fox. Yeah, but you know, but he goes, oh, and he only had some people it's like a drive-in, just people honking horns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and how I many mean, people watched it? You know. Yeah. Well, that's what they figure. See, <clears throat> it doesn't matter yeah. how many people are there. It's th that uh, they're going to cover. They're going to cover Obama. Uh, I mean, if Fox is covering Obama, you know they're going to cover Obama. Yeah. You know, he's a draw. He's a real draw. Anyway, there goes the theme, ladies and gentlemen, our little theme. Uh, been a nice night tonight. Small crowd, but uh, nice. Uh, I, I, almost, I don't know whether I like it when it's a small group of people or when it's a large group of people. <laughs> uh, when it's a large group of people, I just sit back and I don't do anything. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, when it's a smaller crowd, I got to work. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tony. Say hi to your ma for us, okay? I know she's we'll get your mom and Adrian on the show. That's because you drugged her and got her to sleep. And, and of course, thank you very much to John uh, Larkin out there in uh, California in San Frangima. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. And listen, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. Uh, and I'm sure you will enjoy that little fair. It, it, he, he uses Skype for his uh, thing. And you just uh, Skype him at GabNet Live. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. God, I wish this allergy thing would go away. I'm just sneezing and eyes tearing. And... No, it's not COVID because we took my temperature here on the air and it's just fine. Boy, what a time for a person like me who's a hypochondriac. Anyway, listen, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her.
tell her I love her. And by the way, by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. Okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.